Hey Boston, are you waiting? Well, if it makes you feel any better, everybody's waiting. Christmas we want. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Derek Chris and this is my wonderful band. This is the Seven Swans of a Slayin'. <laughs> yes, we just made that up. Um, hi, so uh, here's the deal. Uh, like I said, my name is Darren. If you guys aren't here for a holiday show, now's a, a pretty good time to get the fuck out because uh, it's just going to be a lot of that. Also, what you just heard there was a four little world. If, the, if there's anybody here that's unaccustomed to hearing that kind of language, you can also get the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> Not true. I will try and mitigate my language. However, there's any children here, I know it's the family time of the year. Um, I hope that your parents uh, wore their pearls so that they may clutch them for the rest of the evening. Um, I'm so thrilled you're here. I gotta say, this is a really cool venue. We haven't had it. This is so dope. I mean, look at this. This is like, I truly feel like I'm a cabaret. Are you guys comfy? You've been drinking? You're hanging out? This is nice. I like this vibe. Hopefully this, I feel like we're in each other's like, it's like a nice living room vibe. Is there, um, is there anybody here that is coming, uh, has been to like a, a, a me show before by any chance? Yes. So returning customers, the returning rate is what we're going for. If I'm being honest with myself though, truly, is there anybody here that was kind of like dragged along, didn't really know what they're getting into, don't know what they're yeah. My man, <laughs> you can tell by the excitement. Yeah, I'll go. Who fucking don't care? Let's do it. Well, this is for my man over there and a couple of you. If you have no idea what's going on, hey, neither do I. So we're all going to learn a lot about each other. Hopefully, by the end of the night, maybe have some fun, maybe learn some things. Maybe I learned about you, you learned a bit about me. And my win, sir, would be on the way home. This, this, this is the goal, honestly. And I'll check in with you throughout the night. Uh, hopefully, by the end of the night, you're going like, hey, it's it all right. It's good fun. It's okay. I feel like I'm in the holiday spirit. His songs were like, meh, but you know, he seemed like a nice guy. Uh, that would be good. What's your name, man? Who are we having the big burly yes? What's your name? Oh, I scared him. Tim. What was that? Tim. Tim. Tim, my man. Tim. I'm excited. 
check in with you all night just to make sure. I'm open some notes. I want to make sure that we're keeping you nice and comfortable. I've noticed, okay, man, I thought I was, I'm not going to lie, boss, and I was a little worried it's Tuesday night. And I was like, it's a school night. But then I went, no, it's fucking holidays. People are off from work now. It's like, hey. So we're nice and loose, which is good. Um, so, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll have some laughs, we'll have some songs, we'll have some we'll get real, we'll get weird and silly and all the kind of fun things that we try and do. But like I said, this is a namely holiday show because I made an album a year ago called uh, A Very Daring Christmas. And I said, the jury's out. Maybe those movies won't be by the end of the night. You'd be like, I don't know. But I appreciate the preemptive encouragement. I made an album last year that, obviously, there's a really kind of eye-rolling, stupid-ass pun that is the title of this album. But aside from the obvious choice of that title, this is a very me thing. Arguably, what we'll be doing tonight is kind of like, honestly, the most personal thing I've ever put out musically, as silly as Christmas albums can kind of feel. It's called that because I wrote, produced, arranged songs to be very much in the like oeuvre of, of like me, of things that I thought would be singular to my, the way that my brain works. And so I'm gonna kind of walk you through the why, when, and how of these songs, and hopefully they resonate with you. Hopefully it adds a little bit of a, a plaque next to the proverbial painting of each song when you listen to it at home. And hopefully it elevates your, your holiday spirit, as I said before. So I'm gonna get right into it. Uh, I, I really, my man Tim and everybody else, no matter where you're coming from, <laughs> I really do realize that during the holidays, there's a lot of cool shit to do, a lot of other places you could be in a really great town like Boston, a lot of cool things you could be at other than this. So, I wanna make sure that we make your time worthwhile, I wanna return your value, I really wanna return the value of your investment back by the end of the night. So to start, I'm gonna do something that wasn't necessarily on the bill, and maybe not something you even give a shit about, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because it may be additive in the, in the evaluation of this evening. Uh, would, would anybody like to see a magic trick? I'm gonna just Music, and I love the holiday music. Anybody here like not like Christmas music? Again, exits are clearly marked. <laughs> you need to get out. Uh, now, the holidays have a lot of cool things about the way that those songs are constructed. There are certain tricks that even if you don't know what the words are saying or you don't know what the song is about, when you hear it in the department store, if you hear certain things, you well, okay. For instance, here's magic. Here's the magic trick. I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna play a not a Christmas song. All right, here we go. <laughs> Spirit now. <laughs> that largely has to do, those were sleigh bells, those were jingle bells, the things that immediately make your brain go, oh, I, just, I, feel, I love the holidays. <laughs> I love the way they make me feel. Um, because it's all, they're plastered all over every holiday song ever because it immediately make, turns a regular song into a holiday song. Same with strings, big vocal harmonies, jazz recordings, anything that was recorded pre 1970. Like, you, it feels nostalgic, right? So there's a couple sounds that kind of key us into the way the holidays feel. Now, there, there were two things, and don't worry. This, by the way, you guys should know that you signed up for my mini TED talk, and the music is, the music is just like decoration. I'm pretty sure there's a bar outside. If it gets boring, you gotta pee, go for it. By the time I come back, I'll still be talking. Let's hope not. This is my last little bit. So on this album, I wanted to do two things. One, grab a bunch of songs that you were already familiar with, that people definitely knew, but hopefully record them in a way that had never been uh, kind of, uh, figured before, like you would, have, you would have factored that kind of recording into. So in an unfamiliar, familiar song, unfamiliar recording. Or on the other side, which is more important to me, songs you definitely don't know, that you've never heard in your fucking life, but record them in a way that somehow feel nostalgic and familiar or accessible. Kind of fool your brain into thinking, oh, this is that uh, Frank Sinatra song, right? It's not, you've never heard in your life. So those are kind of what I was doing. Now this song means a great deal to me, I love it. She is one of our greatest living songwriters. She's still with us, may she live another thousand years. And I wanted to uh, kind of pay homage to this song, but I can't do it like her. So the last thing that I love about holiday, like sonic cues, is a lot of my favorite uh, Christmas records actually came out of Detroit in the 1960s, AKA the sound of Motown. So I was like, all those Ron Nance records, those Full Spectre records, that feels somehow like the holidays to me. So I figured maybe if I threw that onto this song, then I wouldn't have to feel so shitty about sounding nothing like Joni Mitchell. Oh, 
Why did you do that? And I just go, man, look, Joey is like, she's a legend. Like, it's, I'm not gonna touch, I'm not gonna touch that record, but I love that song, and I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna just do a rehash of that, because it's not gonna do the song or her any favors. But your impulse is not incorrect. I, if, you have, if your preference links for the other one, I would agree with you. But <laughs> I, uh, I was just like, you know, if I have to put it through my body. I mean, that's, people ask me a lot of time, like, do you consider yourself an actor or a musician? And they're both, they're the same thing. It's all storytelling. It's all taking abstract ideas and making them into an accessible experience somehow, right? So if you take a song, you take the primary colors, you take the things that make the song speak to you and hopefully put them in a way that my little body can interpolate. It's the best of my ability. So, jury's out if I accomplished that, but that was my kind of way of doing that. But that's it. Uh, so, uh, this next one is a song, another song that I wish I wrote. It's by a guy, he's, he's not from Boston, he's from back east. Um, he is, I think, one of the, probably one of the most influential people for me ever as a songwriter, and certainly as a guitar player. Um, it's a song I wish I wrote, and it's a song that I remember hearing going, if I ever make a Christmas album, this has to be on it. And I remember telling the label I wouldn't make it unless this was on it. It's not, no, it's not a hit, it's not the song you go, oh, of course, this one, unless you're like a, a huge fan. It was the album closer, it was his first studio album, and I remember hearing this going, this is such an amazing holiday song, I just have to kind of Christmasify it with all those things that I told you. I put some sleigh bells on it, put some strings on it, so the listener understands that it is, in fact, a holiday song. Now, the, the name is a bit of a, it, it sort of subverts your expectation because it's called St. Patrick's Day. You know? like, like that's just a big one here in Boston, am I right? Uh, so, I, listen, I love St. Patrick's Day as much as the next guy, but the song isn't actually about the day of St. Patrick's Day. It plays with your expectation because the song is, in fact, about falling in love during the wintertime, or being in love during the wintertime, which we all know. This is a very romantic time of year. It's cold, you're staying 
indoors, if you're just starting to see somebody, or if you've been with somebody for a while, this is a very sweet time. It's a time of like appreciating each other. If, if you start dating right around now, shit kind of elevates real quick. <laughs> it's like, what are you gonna do for It's like, whoa, we're there. Okay, shit. Um, tell my parents about it. Like, it's like, whole, it, it moves pretty quick. But it is a very, again, romantic notion, right? Because of all the things that happen, it's like, it starts with Thanksgiving, and Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, and then Valentine's Day. And this love that happens in this period of time kind of incubates, and you kind of hope that that feeling can last until, like, when spring runs around, comes around right around St. Patrick's Day-ish. So that's kind of the, the feeling of this tune. I'm gonna play that for you. It's a little closer to my vocal wheelhouse, and that's me flattering myself, but I wish I wrote this song. <laughs> this, of course, is by the great John Mayer. So if you've ever fallen in love during the winter, this one's for you. Listen to the lyrics. I think you'll have one with you.
Much to your chagrin, I'm sure. Cold ass winters, but you get snow, right? You know, so the very sweet part of it before it gets like disgusting and unbearable around, like, you know, like mid January, where it's like the, 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 the sweet white Christmas becomes the gray, shitty thing blocking your time. Uh, so while it's cute, um, I always think of when I used, to, I used to spend a lot of uh, East Coast Christmas growing up in California where there wasn't, you know, snow. And uh, I would, uh, so, so romanticize it. But another place that I romanticized, even though I wasn't from there, was of course Paris. There's something romantic and nostalgic about Christmas in Paris. There's songs about it. And I don't know, I really kind of, can you give me like a little waltz, like a Parisian waltz? Give me brushes. There's something that kind of transports you to another place that to me, I don't know, it seems just like adjacent to like the holiday vibes. Can you give me some like, Makeshift accordion, Devlin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all we need left is a, a bass. Jayla, can you give me some one six two? Yes. Bonsoir, mes amis. Bienvenue à la dernière de Christmas. Très bon Noël, très dernière de Chris. Welcome. Chanson en français pour vous. C'est euh, vous parlez français, ce soir? Alors, on va essayer de faire ça. Donc, j'ai pensé que ce serait cool de faire un Christmas Walt. Je vais vous donner un petit background. Donc, dans les 50s, Frank Sinatra était appelé Sammy Kahn et uh, Julie Stein, qui étaient des grands songwriters à l'époque. Julie, St Julie Stein, Ron Brooke, Funny Girl, uh, uh, Gypsy, just little, little shows like that. Sammy Kahn wrote like Let It Snow, a ton of other mega hits. These two are what we call in the music industry motherfuckers. <laughs> so Quincy Jones would say, motherfuckers. Heavy, amazing, prolific guys. So he goes, Can you guys write a Quish Christmas Waltz? Of course, they write the Christmas Waltz, if you guys know this song. And this song, Blind and Three Quarter Time. You know that line? Here's the thing that's actually an impure rhyme. Now, if you're a songwriter, you know what that means. It means that there's like a half, like, mine and time isn't exactly. You know, in pop, you're like, it sounds like it rhymes to me, but back then that was kind of a no-no because it's like girl in the world. We do that in pop music, but back then it was like, you can't rhyme those two. You know why? Because one has a fucking D in it. <laughs> one doesn't. So, of course, we've moved past this, but back then, Sammy Kahn was like asking Julie Stein, hey, is this cool? Is it alright if we do this rhyme? He's like, it's fine. It, like, it's, it's a cute line, and nobody gives a shit. Except for some guy in the future. And, early 2020s, will go farther and farther up his own ass about it in Boston one night at the end of his tour. So other than that, they didn't get you. So uh, I thought if I did this song that I would try and, I don't know, I'm a big dork, so I wanted to like perhaps modify this to try and make it a pure rhyme. So if you're associated with the Julie Steiner or Sammy Kahn estate, uh, sorry, not sorry. Um, but of course we want to keep this Parisian, because I want to have my cake and eat it too, because they're still playing this Parisian waltz. Ah, ça peut bien. What happened to that part of the story? Yeah, right. We went off on this other scene. 
and we bring them ensemble, okay? So, <laughs> I wanted to do a French version because I like Walters to be sound very European. So I'm gonna do a bit of a French translation that I got from my friends in the Avalon Jazz Band in Brooklyn. And then I'm gonna do a French and then I'm gonna do an English version, just because it is, after all, a very daring Christmas. And uh, you're held hostage for the next hour. Here we go. Boots are too red. Do we like it? I had to, I had to pin down a couple of L's for them, but they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Um, so uh, I don't know, guys. That was fun. We did some world travel. What did we do? We were, we started in with Joni Mitchell, which is Canada. John Mayer is American. That last tune was very Parisian. So let's let's keep it going full speed. We got anybody coming in from the south here? Anybody? Where are y'all coming from? Texas. Nice. What about you guys? Florida, as they say up, up, up over these parts of the world. 
Florida. I married a girl from Long Island, and she keeps calling it Florida. I'm like, you mean Florida with the O? Florida? Florida, when you play with your dolls? No. What about you? Are these flowers from the South? Amazing, I can tell because they're beautiful. Thank you, I'm putting them here, but that's not to say that I won't take them up there, or it will be a boot hazard, as it were. That's another musical term for you in the music industry, boot hazard. Thank you, that's very generous of you, but I'm putting those right there. I won't forget them, thank you. Okay, who else got flowers for me? Come on, what the fuck? Come on, Jay. These are for somebody that I haven't introduced yet because you beat me to it. But we might as well, we might as well get to it because this is what we call using a segue. Ladies and gentlemen, to my, on my right behind me, this very sexy woman in lace uh, who's been killing on her vocals. This is Nicole Zoraitis. These are for you. You know what, as much as I would like to be accepting donations, I, I do, for the sake of Tim and his friends, I do want to make sure we keep this ball rolling. Because there will get to be a point, and it'll feel a lot sooner than later. There's, there's going to be a point in the show where you're like, it, it's, it's time. It's the show. So let's, let's facilitate this, the speed we got going here. So here's the thing. We've been doing some travel. So we have Texas. We have, where did we mention? Uh, where did you guys from? Florida, we got Florida. It doesn't matter where you're from, but here's the thing. I recorded this album in the South, in Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, baby. And the reason why I mention this is because Nashville has a lot of kick-ass music history, obviously. If you guys know what the Nashville sound is, it's the time in the 1950s where you had all these badass motherfuckers recording incredible music that made its way to the mainstream via this newfangled thing called television. Suddenly people like Patsy Cline, and uh, 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 Johnny Cash were not just relegated to these like sort of Bible Belt tours and southern like country western music. You see those movies like even the last Elvis movie and um, and uh, and Walk the Line. They're always playing in the back of a truck somewhere, and it's just in this one contained area. So once TV comes around, it starts going everywhere, and people in California and New York and people from other sides are like, "This is incredible." So that was the Nashville sound. I love that music. And while I was there, I was like, "I need to." pay homage to that sound while I'm here, because I ain't from the South, but a lot of really incredible music comes from, from that part of the world, and is big, a big contributor to a lot of the music that we listen to now. So I was like, okay, if I was to do this, what would it be about? Well, two things struck me. Once, when I was there, I was working really hard. There is a 24-7, 365 Christmas bar called Santa's Pub in Nashville, Tennessee, which I could not endorse more. Um, so that was kind of swirling in my brain, and I was like, I wanted to write like a duet, like a Johnny and June, Junior Johnny uh, and June Carter kind of thing. And I was, I was washing dishes, like, because I'm fucking useless in the kitchen. And, I'm, and I was like, okay, I can, I can do the cleanup. So like Christmas is over, right? It's like I've, I've taken the trash out, the wrapping paper. I've done all the shit, like, we're done, right? <laughs> like everyone's kind of tired, they've been up for all, they're kind of, kind of early, and you've had a big meal, and you're just kind of like, all right, let's, let, we're... <laughs> Oh, and I remember I was trying to get this one piece of grease that would just would not get the fuck off the pan. You know what I'm saying? I soaked it like nine ways from Sunday. And I'm sitting there going, it's time, it's time to drink now. It's time to get drunk. It's time to get drunk on Christmas. I was like, drunk on Christmas. I wanted to get drunk on Christmas because like, what else is left to do? I've done all the things for other people. Like, this one's for me, man. Like, what would Santa do after a long day? You think he's gonna go all the way around the world to every fucking house in every single country in the planet and just go home and just, like, play Scrabble? Like, motherfuckers can get, like, a nice cup of something sweet. Uh, or not, I guess it were. So, uh, I'm gonna play that tune for you. And I wanted it to kind of be evocative of, like, if, if Dolly Parton in the 70s did a duet with, like, later years Dean Martin when he had scotch just sewed to his hand, like, intravenously attached to his soul. <laughs> Like, I just wanted that to be the duet that they would do, it would be like the crossover hit of the century. But I flatter myself. But I flatter myself mainly because the person who is singing with me on the record is Lainey Wilson, who's a fantastic country artist who we do not have tonight, but as indicated by the presence of gorgeous flowers that were given to her. She's a bad bitch, an incredible vocalist, and she's gonna be singing with me instead. So you wanna get drunk on Christmas, Lee Nicole? <laughs> some of you have some flammable objects in front of you, I would encourage you to ingest them uh, at some point during this song. But this one is, uh, here's looking at Nashville and looking at, uh, you know, raising your Christmas, Christmas spirit. 
about uh, for Tim's sake, you know. Before he came here today, he was like, I wonder how Derek Chris feels about the grammatical function of y'all. And I could sense that, so I wanted to, again, return investment, value, value. All right, so, uh, gosh. Um, so we've done some traveling, right? That's, you know, one, again, wanted to really make this a special experience. So I thought, well, I've spent Christmas in a lot of places. I come from a very multinational family. Uh, and we're, I'm like me, my, uh, my 
the boys in my family were like the only Americans, everybody else is from everywhere else because uh, we come from a big Filipino family and they all married into other places. So everybody grew up all over the place and so Christmas was kind of spread around. And uh, I had very lucky to spend Christmas at a bunch of different places. And I also, my father was like, he was like the token white guy in the family. Uh, and uh, he, he, was, he was total Anglophile, total Anglophile. And he, he loved, uh, he lived in England for many years, and he loved uh, Christmas goose. So when I, growing up, I was the only guy that I knew in San Francisco of all places, like living in Dickensian England, like as, you know, wait, waiting for the Christmas goose, huh? it's Christmas night. Like, did anybody here eat goose at all, anybody, no? No, none of that part of New England made its way to current England. Um, but it's, it's just, you know, it's a very unique tradition for me, and so I have a lot of my own personal traditions, and uh, my friend who knows that I, was, that I always look for weird Christmas songs um, sent me this tune. He's like, you fucking love this song, man. You gotta do something with it. And it was called All Those Christmas Clichés. And I fell in love with the song. And here's the deal. The original song is by Flaherty and Aarons. Do you know who they are? Or they, they wrote some musicals. What musicals did they write, darling? I'm putting it on the spot, that's tough. Give it a think. Once on this island, yes. There we go, yes. Uh, they wrote Ragtime, they wrote uh, Susan Cole, I said, uh, also, we've learned this term tonight, motherfuckers, these guys, incredible, incredible people. So they, so they wrote this song for a woman named Nancy Lamont, and she made a Christmas album in the 90s. Nancy Lamont, bad bitch, she's incredible. And she, she sang the hell out of the song. The problem is, this incredible song that I fell in love with was like a really slow, very melancholic ballad. And here's, here's the turn of this song. So in the song, she's talking about all the things that she loves during Christmas, all the cheesy shit. And she really goes to bat for it, right? She's like, I love, love this, I love this. And, and she keep, goes really hard about the things that people, you know, would roll their eyes at, but she loves it. Because at the very end of the song, she sings, As for the guy in the big red outfit, instead of flying off, he stays. And you go, Whoa. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so sad because it's about a woman, a woman scorned on the holiday. She's by herself. This man is whoever in her life has left her, and that's why she loves the cheesy shit because it makes her feel better about being alone. You're like, oh my fucking god, that is such a good song. <laughs> it's so well written, but it's heartbreaking. And I was like, shit, well, I can't record that because I have to, I really have to sort of Bobby Darrenify it, make it swing. I have to make it peppy. I have to make the lyrics jubilant. So I got co signed. They, they were very kind. They let me do it. Um, so shout out to Flair and Aaron's, but I, I changed the lyrics to be about things that had to do with my own personal Christmas cliches. And instead of that line that I just sang, I decided, in thanks, to give them a shout out, uh, to give Flair and Aaron's a shout out. So if anybody heard this song, hopefully they would, uh, you know, be pointing in the direction of the OG people. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my Christmases. I'm going to I'm going to sit right here in this bed. You know, I'm going to sit right here, guys. I'm just going to sit right right here, so we can all be in each other's. Devin, why don't you hit me up? I have my feet dangled, but I'm going to kick in the face. So thanks for coming to my house, guys. You know, I've been living at the Wilbur for about three, five years now. I think that people can join me. But I'm going to tell you a little bit of my Christmas cliches. I love our matching jackets, by the way. I'm just saying that. Hell yeah, we both got red sequins on. So maybe some of these cliches uh, resonate with you guys, all right? I've spent Christmas in Los Angeles. Christmas east of Westerly. Not too far from here, Rhode Island. Christmas in Kyoto. And I always thought I couldn't matter the less. But lately, come December, I can I want the tree. All the toys and tinsel. I want the wreath on the red front door. I want the elves in the yard. Each sentimental car dripping with glitter on the floor. I want a roof full of plywood reindeer. I want a road full of horse drawn sleighs. All those Christmas cliches. I want the goose with all the gravy, the goose that dad only ever made. I want that gulp in the tear, the moment that I hear Randy Williams being played. I want a lake full of perfect skaters. I want a fruitcake with a
because it's cold. Cliche. Hey, is there anybody's birthday here today? It's a birthday, happy birthday. December birthdays, that's a tough rap. That's a tough rap, especially around this time of the year because it's like you're out of school, right? So it's like, do you get the school birthday or you have to like compound it with Christmas? So, hey, happy birthday, I'm glad you're here. It's tough that you have a birthday the same month as one of the most famous birthdays throughout the history of mankind. But you know, he's been dead for a long time. So like, but I hear he's coming back. Play our cards right. Who knows? <laughs> Keep it secular. Keep it non-denominational. Um, so uh, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep keep it weird, keep it with shit you guys have never heard before. This is a good pee break, by the way. If anybody needs to get especially the people in the front here, like I know when I'm like up front at shows, I'm always like, fuck if I get up, he's gonna be so mad. Okay, <laughs> care, you guys pay your money, like you can do what the fuck you want. All good, no worries. If you gotta pee, you gotta do your thing, like do your thing, it's alright. Um, so, uh, just, just, just as FYI, in case anybody's nervous, because this one's going to be a slow one. It's going to be very sweet, but it's going to be slow, so again, just, then, you know. So, uh, and I can't even see you, motherfucker, so it's okay, you guys can pee whenever you want. <laughs> but I'm sure you're beautiful, you're, you're shrouded, you, like, I feel, <laughs> I feel like when the lights come up, it's just going to be a bunch of, like, ghosts of Christmas future, just... <laughs> plenty of me. I hope it's not the case. I see lights, I see very quickly fun things. So I'm going to do something kind of, um... A bit sentimental, if you don't mind. I like to think I've always been sentimental, but this one's very near and dear to my heart because uh, when I was, uh, gosh, I don't know, 10, uh, grew up in San Francisco, there was a theater company that I worked with called 42nd Street Moon. And it was my professional like debut. I was still in school, but after school, I would like work with adults. And it was like the beginning of my journey in being professional in theater. And uh, this company did a lot of obscure musicals. That was their bag. They would try and revive shit nobody heard of, which is maybe where I got that. <laughs> Habit, you know, in my own career. And there's a musical I did that was called Fanny. Um, now, was there anybody here uh, uh, going to musical theater in the 1950s in New York? <laughs> All right, see, that's right. There was a general murmur of no laughs, which is the correct answer, because if any of you said yes, I would have to call a paramedic and quickly get you home, because it's, it's way past your bedtime if you're like 90 years old. Just one more night on Earth, I have to see Darren Chris <laughs> talk about obscure musicals. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what happened. Uh, so, <laughs> I crack my, uh, this is just for me, I'm just sort of being masturbatory up here, I'm sorry. It's, it happens when you give you a mic long enough, I apologize. We'll keep it moving, Tim, I apologize. <laughs> so, anyway, you weren't, all of you are young, so what I'm trying to say, y'all are young, man. You're all young people, no matter how old you think you are, you make fun of yourself or you're young. You know why? Because it's Tuesday night, you're in Boston, we're hanging out, this is good. We're good. We're good. So, in the 50s, there was a musical called Fanny. You've probably never heard of it, but I did it when I was a kid, so obviously I'm very sentimental about the music. And there's a song in it that has nothing to do with Christmas, but I always thought about it during Christmas time because it was a song about coming home. Now, I thought when I was making this album, I want to put this song in there, but they don't really talk about Christmas, but man, what is more evocative of the holiday spirit than coming home, returning to a place that's familiar, that has people and things that are familiar to you, that you love, that love you. Things that, you know, that have like an old routine that you can wrap like a blanket, you know? Something really sweet that, it's, it's a feeling that we all chase every year. Every year we, we suddenly are somewhat okay with paying exorbitant uh, hiked up travel prices on planes, trains, and automobiles, just so we can get back to this feeling. And it's a marvelous concept that I was like, okay, so I have to put this on the album because any time that I would come home from the holidays when I was growing up, 
I, I would sing the songs, I'd go up the many stairs, I grew up in San Francisco, a lot of stairs, a lot of hills. So I'd go, being, I'd go up the stairs and I would sing this song to myself. And so, um, again, while there's no outright mention of Christmas, hopefully that, are there people coming home, for, uh, put back to Boston or, or Mass, from out of town? Well, welcome home, the song's called Welcome Home, this one's for you. Should you, and by the way, this goes for all the artists that I'm mentioning, should you be curious, I encourage you to go look up their, their songs, the original records, for whatever reason, if you've never heard of Joey Mitchell before, well, maybe check her out. <laughs> Good thing to do at some point in your life. Um, uh, what's that? Fanny's classic. Yes, it is. Fanny is classic, too. The 0.2% of nerds existing. I see you, brother. <laughs> I get it. I see you in the back of that piano bar going, yeah. You're the guy that I go, Cool, let's give a drink. Um, so, uh, yes, that is a beautiful little show. What's funny about that is I was thinking about songs that have no mention of Christmas, and there are quite a few. Um, the most famous Christmas song of all fucking time. Not one mention of Christmas. Do you know what song I'm talking about? It's been around so long, it's in the public domain, for Christ's sake. Jingle Bell! 
Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells is a Thanksgiving song written in the late 1800s about eating Thanksgiving and then getting your ass on a one-horse open sleigh with some Jingle Bells on it, and we're gonna go find some chicks and some booze, and we're gonna have ourselves a great Thanksgiving. Read the rest of the lyrics. Of course, it's written in older English, uh, but that's kind of what the song is about. And what makes me happy about that is like, you know, that was like a banger back then because it's still out there. Like some some theme, universal theme. Some things never change, you know. Just going out to party, find someone to hook up with. It's all it's all good. So uh, yeah, that's and it was written by Jay Pierpont. No relation to that show I did on Broadway ten years ago. So I figured if he can do it, I could do it. Also, just because I'm leaning in, guys, because it's the fucking last show of the tour. This is the last one. That's it for this year. Um, the original recording, my, my man over here knows, the original recording is something like I got Ezio Penza, who was this amazing Italian baritone. He, his version is, Welcome home, my says of door. And it's, I mean, it's like gorgeous, but just like, I don't think it sound like that. So I had to like, chip bankerify it and make it sound, you know, um, more like Vince Giraldi, Christmas time is here again. That's kind of the, the thing I was trying to uh, key your brain into a little bit. He also sung, some enchanted evening, which you guys definitely know that's yeah. <laughs> So that's him. So uh, anyway, check out Easy Pins, uh, check out all that other cool shit. Check out fanning, which is a naughty word in England. <laughs> well, it's been too slow. Let's pick this up. I need to make, make you guys aware of something. Uh, so the seven swans are slain behind me. There's many of them. We haven't met all of them yet. I'd like to draw your attention to this handsome gentleman on my right. Um, and hold your applause while I tell you some cool things about this guy. Aside from him being incredibly handsome and adept at the guitar, um, he is, I would say, this evening and the entire tour, so the entire year's uh, collection of music, and he is the musical director of all the things. Now, that is a pain in the ass job that requires booking musicians, sorting out schedules, writing charts, getting all these binders together. It's a pain in the fucking dick. And he's one of my best pals from college, and uh, it deserves a warm round of applause. <laughs> Tomek made a Christmas album right around the time I was making mine, and you have some terrific musicians up here. Some really, any musicians in the house? We are in Boston, some good music schools around here. Um, let's play some jazz, maybe. Let's 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 pep it up. This is a, this is a version that Tomek had, and I was like, let's play this live. Let's show off some of these bad motherfuckers we have on stage. <laughs> Say, oh, well, we'll say no, man. And by the way, 
I know you guys were thinking you were seeing a holiday show, and you are. Maybe you didn't know you were seeing a jazz show, maybe you didn't know you were seeing a Nashville sound show, maybe you didn't know you were seeing a John Mayer show. You get all those shows. I'm going to persist with the whole value thing, it's important. But what you did not know is that you were also going to get a bona fide wardrobe change. That's right. Eat your heart out, Stephanie German Yada, a.k.a. Lady God. God. Now we make do with what we got. It's sweater weather, y'all, so we got to kind of, you know, keep it fun. Now, usually this is where we're going to ooh, 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 that's fun. Is that me? Is that going to be? There we go. So... Every show is a little different, and this is no exception. It's the last show, so we're gonna do some stuff. Um, just one more time for this incredible band, guys. Let's have a song. Let's have a song. I've been doing this right pretty much every day. Now, I want to just give a special mention. It's the end, so this may be a bit indulgent. I do apologize, but we have our resident young people with us. That uh, one I found on the on the old TikTok, and I insisted that she join us. Not even 21 yet, right? You two, is it? No, I'm 20, Darren, but if the bars ask, I'm 33. And I'm yes, that's right. That's right. Good girl. Good girl. Kellen is a marvelous comedian and a fantastic player, and I just fell in love with her on the internet and said, You have to come. This is her first tour with us, as is Jay Lachie on the bass. Jay Lachie is a senior and playing hooky. Well, I guess you're off school right now, but while we were practicing, she was literally in finals at fucking Juilliard. Uh, so thank you for joining us. We're in good hands, guys. We're in good hands. The next gen is, is looking real good. I will fight anybody that says new generation doesn't know shit. I'm like, you shut your fucking mouth right now. I'm gonna say this. So, uh, thank you guys for being with us. This is you guys' first tour, right? Like, touring with a single, like, artist, right? Well, thank you for, for joining us. We're very lucky. <laughs> And only because he didn't have a soul on this last one, I wanted you guys to give it up for one of my favorite Avengers, Doctor Strange. Uh, <laughs> he didn't bring his cake. That's Morgan Price. I, I asked him if anybody makes Doctor Strange jokes, and he said no. I was like, that's a shame. Your, your facial hair is exquisite. <laughs> All right. So every show, I do a different song that we learn, like, kind of, like, right before the show. So we're going to attempt to play a song that I've never played in my life. Yes! <laughs> So, um, I've played a lot of bizarre Christmas songs. Just uh, yesterday, uh, one of my favorite artists, and I, I call her my, my personal Jesus, one of my very f personal favorite artists, uh, has a new song out, and it's about, like, New Year. And so I was like, well, I have to learn this immediately and play it. I learned it because I listened to it, and I have the lyrics printed out, but I haven't, I've never played it on guitar, ever. So I'm gonna do that in front of you. Uh, we have a cajon here, so we might play a couple drums, because the band usually, I usually do this by myself. We've never done this ever before. We're just gonna kind of feel it out, for better or for worse. Tim, if you're not into it, exits with the marks. Been through this. Um, so I'll give it my best shot. But uh, this is a really dope song. Please check her out again. She's one of the biggest inspirations. This is a song by Emily King. Okay, let's see how we can do this. Okay, I'm gonna start out kind of slow. Spent the year trying to get you to love me Put your knees high up above me All night talking on the telephone Listen to you crying about being alone Spent the summer trying to get you to care Brought the new jeans and grew my hair Call me up when you wanted me around But when I needed you, you could never be found So this year's gonna be about me Never will I have another reason to doubt me this year This year Oh, this year's gonna be about me Never will I have another reason to doubt me this year This year Oh, I spent the day trying to get your attention On my mind just to make a connection Running around just to get to you But when I showed up you had something to do so mama and all your friends I didn't know it was all pretend It lifted you up, you were bringing me down But this is gonna turn the tables around
That's how I feel about Emily King, honestly. If, if check out her music, she's it, like, you ever see somebody that like simultaneously makes you feel like utter shit and garbage <laughs> at the same time as making you like want to become a better human, human being? Like that's how I feel every time I see. That can't be me. We need to. This needs that needs to move on to Emily King. She she's extraordinary. She's like if like if like Beyonce had a baby with Prince, but was like an indie darling. <laughs> That's her. She's like extraordinary. Full cosign, Emily King, all the way. Um, well, we're gonna slow it down, because you know, that's what we keep doing. We gotta have levels. Tim, you doing all right, man? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this one you guys definitely know. I know a lot of the songs you probably didn't know. But this one, you certainly will. It is probably, it's, it's not only one of my favorite holiday songs, it's one of my favorite songs, like, Period. I think it's one of the greatest tunes, just constructually, harmonically, it's, it's like flawless to me. And uh, the reason why, well I didn't want to record it at first, because in my mind I was like, the gold standard has been reached on this record, there's nothing I can do. You know that shit I was talking about, trying something different? I heard that, you know, I was like, I can't do that with this song, because the king of Christmas made it very, very famous, uh, none of the, one of my other huge heroes, um, Mr. Nat King Cole, or made this uh, that was like just one of the goats. A uh, really amazing musician, songwriter, performer, actor, everything. He did it all. He was incredible. So I have a thing for 360 guys and gals that kind of do a bit of everything. And uh, there is a, a song that um, he made famous but was written by another 360 guy who you may not know wrote this song. Uh, he was known widely as the Velvet Fog, whose name he hated but uh, it was written by Mr. Mel Torme, who himself was an exquisite writer, uh, producer, actor. So he, he's an like, insane pianist, an insane drummer. He's just like one of the coolest guys. So he wrote this song. You maybe didn't know that, but you definitely will know this song. Tell and I are just gonna kind of improvise, do our own little thing with it, and uh, Morgan may come in, and we're just gonna play around with it, if you don't mind. Make it couture just for you guys. <laughs>
season, the holiday season. Show up the do and here we dark. Don't forget to hang up the sock, cause just exactly at 12 o'clock, he'll be coming down the chimney. did want to, before this night was concluded, I wanted to talk about something very serious, which was um, growing up, you know, I, I, on Christmas Eve, I would sit there in bed and I would look at the ceiling, just like hoping, putting whatever I could, whatever energy out there, in, in my heart of hearts, just quietly, I would say, Santa, Santa Claus, I want it. Only a hippopotamus will do. I don't want a doll, no tinker tinker toy. I want a hippopotamus to play with and enjoy. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I don't think Santa Claus will mind, do you, Tim? He won't have to use a dirty chimney flue. No, I just slip him through the front door. That's the easy thing. Surprise when I open 
open up my eyes to see a hippo hero standing there. I hold up the bottles for Christmas. I the bottles for dinner. No crocodiles, no rhinoceroses. I only like write it down. Hippopotamuses and hippopotamuses like me too. Yep. Says a hippo would eat me up, but then teacher says a hippo is a vegetarian. There's lots of room for him in our two car garage. A freedom there and wash him there in different ways. Massage, I can see me on Christmas morning creeping down the stairs. Joy, what's a prize when I open up my eyes to see a hippo hero standing there? sitting in my, in my castle on the beach that I bought with all the royalty checks 30 years ago. That song was recorded in 1954, it might be two, but in the 50s, by a 10-year-old girl named Gayla Peavy, who's still with us. My wife sent me, and she told me that she had an Instagram message from a friend of hers from like high school who apparently married her daughter. And he was like, he was like dude, you're, uh, I just saw your husband uh, sing my mother-in-law's song on the Macy's Day Parade. I was like, holy shit, Gayla Peavy, holding it strong. Amazing, she's still with us. But she was 10 when she recorded it, and I was 10 when I heard it, and I remember somebody telling me that she was 10, and I was like, what? She sounds like she's 43. Are you kidding me? Like, you can sound like that when you're 10 years old? I was so impressed. And uh, this is song we always play in the house. My mom, I don't know if you guys are, are, are RuPaul fans, but my mom... I'm not throwing any shade whatsoever. I'm just saying that my mom knows her way around a lip sync, that's all. I don't think she can hand, I don't think she can hold a cam, so any of those, those gals, uh, like, sense of craft and character and all the makeup and all that stuff like wouldn't be able to compete but lip sync bang on she knows her shit so she she loves she loves to lip sync that one around the house so we had to include it also i was like everybody does it it's mostly women that cover it and it's always a straight cover of the boom and i was like you know i have to like i don't know half time and if you want a hip hippopotamus for christmas then i need an spd and some 808s and 909s and make sure that it sounds a little hip hop, you know, because I had a lot of for Christmas. It seemed appropriate. Anyway, that was one for, for me, and hopefully other people liked it along the way. Um, so, well, we're getting to the end of the evening, guys. Is that time I talk? No, it's time. It's, it's time. It's time. People got babysitters and shit. We gotta, we gotta wrap this up, you know? So, uh, I really, um, I want to just say very quickly, and by that I mean it's gonna take a while, uh, <laughs> How, look, I, I say this every night, and I, I wear my heart in my sleep constantly, so, because I'm fully aware of the transience of life. Things can go instantly, right? So it's important to me to always tell people how grateful I am, how thankful I am for them, and I've said to my band, I've said to everybody on the store, uh, and I say to you from the bottom of my heart, I, I know it's kind of joke here earlier about, like, you could do anything impossible, but you really could. Like, you could be doing fucking anything. And the fact that you came here, it is not lost on me how special it is, and I, I feel very privileged to get to bend your ear for an hour and a half, almost two hours. <laughs> Um, thank you for waiting, for driving, for waiting on the train, taking the Uber to come uh, hear me blather on about things that are personal to me. I know it's a bit of a one-sided conversation, so um, it is. A, it, it, well, I fucking love you. This is this is not this is this is, a, this is a symbiotic relationship. I can't just do this shit. I mean, I can. I can just sit here by myself, but I don't know if it would be much of an experience. So, um, so thank you again. It's a privilege for me to get to do this, and I'm so grateful for you guys uh, supporting this. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I have to say, when you make a Christmas album, most of us get the holidays for what, like depending on what you do, maybe like two, three, three weeks if you're lucky, maybe just a few days, depending on how busy your life is. Um, but for most people, you get this kind of sweet little chunk of days, and then poof, right back to January, back to the, to, the, to the rat race, and then we kind of forget about it until it comes back. And what's amazing about making a Christmas album is I spent like a whole year <laughs> thinking about like the holidays and the period that's usually relegated to just a few days, a, few, or a couple weeks. And when I was doing that, it was kind of amazing the shit that I thought about and that I remember like in the middle of April, going through pictures and looking at pictures of me as a child. You, I go, like, the thing that really hit me was like, ugh, like the fact that the holidays exist is is magic. It is an incredible thing. As, as as corporate of a setup, as commercial that you want to think it is, oh, it's just a, a, a conspiracy to, to, you know, to promote capitalism, to buy shit. Sure, whatever. But if that, if that conspiracy is making me take a fucking second to chill out and be thankful for what I have, to love the people that love me, to appreciate the things that I've done and I want to do with my life, then, like, sign me up. Because proactively, the entire world, no matter what you believe in, for this period of the year, the cards, the gifts, the TV shows, the movies, there is a thing that is moving all of us. Despite the shitty ass things that we do to each other and ourselves on a day to day basis, we go, everybody goes, yeah, but I should, that's the holidays, I should, I, I should like try to be a better person. <laughs> and that's miraculous, that's a fucking miracle. And that's why I always stick up for human beings, because as dumb as we are, we're fucking amazing. Like, we do some incredible things. So that was less about the human race, more about you specifically in this room, boss. That, um, I hope you guys give yourself some credit for the things that you have done um, with your lives and the, and the things that you've added to other people's lives and you can give yourself a pat on the back. This next song is, was important to me to close the album on. It's a beautiful song by uh, the great Regina Spector. And uh, she has a song of called Happy New Year. And this song is about, not about, even though the Emily King song is about what you're gonna do next year, this is kind of the opposite of that. This is not a song about resolution, about what I'm going to do. This is a song about your constitution, that on New Year's Eve, you can think about what you've done the last 365 days, and you can not be like, okay, here's what's next. You think about what has gone, and you go, I'm cool with that, I'm happy and, and proud of the things that I managed to do, not the shit that I lost, not the shit that didn't go the way that it planned, but you can sit there and go, this is good. I'm grateful, and that is what's gonna propel me into the next year. Because if you really think of all the shit, maybe like the bad stuff, bad stuff tends to be a lot louder, but smaller in number at the end of the day, right? And on a day-to-day -day basis, you picked up the kids from school, you made the thing for that person, you showed up on that thing. Like, there are tiny acts of grace and goodness that add up to a large amount of things that you forget about by the end of the year. But I encourage you to remember those things and give yourself credit for being good human beings. Um, and this is a song about really embracing those things about yourself and letting those be the things that you focus on into the new year, not the things that maybe didn't go so great. But I, again, am so grateful that you're here from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And I'm wishing all of you a happy new year. And they 
They say you can hear it over the island, starting in Times Square, spreading throughout. And it's a roar like the ocean. It comes from a distance. Crows louder than crows quiet. She sits in a dream. for next tour. Um, I'm gonna, just you guys, uh, is there any holiday songs you didn't hear tonight that, are, that aren't on the album that you'd like to hear? Maybe so we can just take inventory for next album. I'm putting you on, what's that? What's that? Last Christmas, my man. Tonic the Donkey, okay. And then, I'm gonna show you guys to see you again. Any? You know what, I'm asking the wrong people, guys. You're the right people, but guys, Tim. Are there any holiday songs that you're particularly fond of that you would have would have been cool to hear tonight, or in general? Not gonna lie, Barry, it was pretty kick-ass. Oh, okay, good. So we're doing no more songs, no more songs. Uh, my friends from my friends from uh, Brazil. Were, were any any holiday songs you want to hear? Woo! I love Last Christmas. 
Last Christmas. People really love that tune. How about, how about Domingo Republic? What do we got? Any tunes? Eight Crazy Nights. Eight Crazy Nights. Okay. That's a good one. Or the Honda song in general. Okay, now it's like the price is right, where it's like, you all could be saying the right answer, but I don't know. All right. Oh, that's a, that's a deep cut. Not a holiday song. Nice try. All right, so I'm hearing White Chris, we're hearing Last Christmas, Dominic the Don, Donkey. All right, I'm just taking inventory for next time. Instead, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do any of those. Uh, Alright, let's bring 
the Seven Swans are saying that. Little Judy, Judy Garland and what they get set. There's a great uh, the Judy Garland Christmas special, 1964, which is what that episode of Glee is based off of, where they try and get to the So, what if, I mentioned Mel Torme, so she she actually it's like the paradigm for like who could have who could be at the doll? Like that's where it comes from. That whole special was around when she did that. And uh, Mel Torme was one of the guests, right? And so she's like, he comes and she's oh Mel, no, play that song I love so much. And she's like at this point kind of you know she's pretty loose. Uh, and, uh, and it's crazy because Mel Torme would have written you know Chestnuts on the Road, open uh, the Christmas song, aka Chestnuts Rising, uh, like within a few years of this special. So it's kind of crazy that she's like play that song that I love that like the world doesn't realize is going to be one of the biggest songs of all time forever and ever. And like he starts playing it and Judy just kind of like she gets all the words wrong. And it's amazing. And he's such a gentleman where he's just kind of smiling through it. But definitely check that out. Is the band, are we all met? Are we all here? Now here's the thing, guys. I love a good Christmas party. I love a good Christmas dance. I like Christmas dance music, shit that makes me want to move. A lot of you have been, well, some of you have been, are you guys standing back there? Oh, oh, shit. Okay, cool. Then you're the minority. Then you, you can actually do the, if you want to sit down, you're welcome. To. But I'm just saying, if the spirit moves you, not right now, but like in the middle of the song, you know when. Uh, our legs have been kind of perpendicular for a lot of the time. Like, if you want to make that shit parallel, it's like, go for it. Like, let's get that blood going through your bones, because you've know, been sitting for almost two hours. So, just, I guess, a pragmatic thing, that might be a good idea. Um, I'm just putting that out there now, but you don't have to, just a suggestion. Um, I love Christmas dances. I love, I always love, like, office parties. It's like, everybody's getting ready to go crazy, because it's like almost break time. It's almost, it's just, it's a great reason to celebrate. And I, wrote, I wanted to write a song that kind of, I thought of all the things that make me dance during Christmas. All right, here's a list. Uh, carols from a choir, family by the fire, listening to Mariah sing. And the happiness in my head is fuller than Santa's sled is, and the only call I'll get is Old Nat King. And I was so, I was so goddamn proud of that lyric that I had to write a whole song around it. Thank you so much. I want to leave you with a little holiday pep in your step if you feel the spirit move you. you know? I ain't gonna stop you. But thank you for being here. I wish you all the best in your holiday season, wherever you may be going to, wherever you're coming home from. And uh, I don't know, let's boogie. Let's let's get this shit on the road, all right? This is called Christmas Dance.
Here you come, Dominic the donkey. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Dominic the donkey. Oh, come on. He hums. Oh, come on. He hums. Here you come. It's Dominic the donkey. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Just like a wife I used to know. With this a baby. There, I just took three requests. And just to say, as we leave Tim on his way, and the rest of you guys, we say bye to Brazil, and Dion, and Boston, Mass, local area. I want to return the investment. Now, I gave you a three for one deal, okay? I gave you three. All you're gonna do is give me one. Is there any way to get the house lights up on these beautiful people? Oh my fucking god! You're beautiful. Half of you are like, please no. The rest of you that got already to go to the show are like, yes, show me off. I look so good in this sweater. I put my favorite lip liner on. I'm feeling great. I'm looking at you, sir. Uh, top, top. Can I see the house lights up there? I see you guys a little bit. Oh, you have a beautiful silhouette behind you. You all look so beautiful. This is the kind of Christmas dance I want to go to. Even y'all's with the arms folded, that's okay. You know why? Because it means you're keeping cozy. But keep this in mind. This will be a dance move that's coming up soon. So, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Holy shit. Uh. See what's happening there? That's an inevitable biological function. It's called groove, right? You feel this shit, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta move. So here's the deal. Three for one deal. One thing you gotta do is a dance that you're gonna learn. It's a four-parter, but I'm gonna go through this very quickly, all right? Part one is a twist. God damn, y'all looking so good. This is great. This is a great Christmas party already. Part two is a shake. Shake whoever you like. That was nice. I kind of like this wave action. That was very, that was good. Very Pentecostal. Keeping it on the non-denominational. Part three. It's very simple. And some of you are already doing this, so you're way ahead of the game. It's just a freeze. It's just... It's a frost. You can do this. Whatever tableau, whatever pose you want to hold, you just freeze. Then rule number four is you just chill. You shake it off. You chill. Let me show it to you in sequence. My handsome young man in the bow tie. Let me show how it's done. Here we go. Five, six, seven. You're going twist, twist, twist it like you made it on the night. You twist it and shake, shake.
power of each other. Stay inspired, stay positive. Have a warm and bright holiday season. We'll see you next time. Be well. Thank you so much. One more time for the seven swans of slain. My name is Darren Chris. Tell your friends. Happy holidays.